All right, here's the play in game down in Miami. This should be a layup for the Heat, right? Wrong. Second quarter, Hawks already with an 18 point lead. Trey Young drives past Max Struess for the easy layup. Atlanta led by 15 at the half. And they were in control of this thing the whole way. Late third, Heat trailing by 11. Jalen Johnson with the steal. Trey Young back to Johnson. He sends the alley oop in, and that's going to increase the lead. The Atlanta Hawks here is a corner three. DeJounte Murray with a three, stretches it from eight to 11. That's sort of what the game was. The Heat would get it into that seven, eight range, and every time the Hawks just pushed it right back up and more or less cruised to a surprise upset win. And now that means the Celtics get the Atlanta Hawks in the first round of the NBA playoffs in the East. They begin Saturday afternoon, game one here at the Garden. Three games, not much to see here. Celtics pretty much dominated this team in the regular season. What does that mean for the postseason? We bring in Chris Gasper of the Boston Globe. We're going to roll. It's presented by Town Fair Tire. And uh, this is going to be presented by Touchview Interactive Display Panels, available at the Oakers Company. The Celtics again, 3-0 against the Hawks in the regular season. Chris, what does this mean for the postseason. Yeah, it should mean that this series is over in four or five games. The Hawks can't hang with the Celtics. And you saw the disparity there in three-point shooting percentage. And we know when the Celtics make threes, they're virtually unbeatable. And the Hawks, I think, are a team that also relies on the three with Trey Young. And to hold Atlanta to 26.7% from three during the regular season, this is a team that it does not match up well with the Celtics. This is an ideal matchup. This is a gift for the Celtics. Okay, again, vote at NBCSportsBoston.com slash vote or scan the QR code on the screen and click on uh, the BST icon, I believe. Here you can vote and follow along. Mike, you're upset with this result. You wanted yeah, the Celtics. Yeah, I am. I am upset with it because I, I think – Joe Mazzula needed a test in the first round. He needed a test in the first round. Eric Spolstra just to get into that playoff matchup. And then a team like Atlanta, I, it's not going to be a sweep. It should be a sweep, but it won't be because the Celtics will fall asleep in, in a game against this team. They are just going to – they're not going to take Atlanta as seriously as they would Miami. Miami is an opponent they still have respect for. Playoff Jimmy Butler, it's a real thing. He went seven games with them last year in the conference finals. Atlanta, they'll win the first two games. They may lose game three in Atlanta and then wipe them out in five. But I think the coaching matchup for Missoula would be good because he needs to get warmed up and know what's coming in the second round in the conference finals. But Mike thinks long term, this doesn't set the Celtics up as well as, uh, you know, a heat series makes them more battle tested, more likely for them to push through later on in the playoffs. Do you agree with that or? Or not. I think it makes it more battle-tested, but there's a flip side of that, which is you're having to exert more energy for a team that already played a lot of their starting guys, you know, high minutes in terms of Tatum and Brown. So I think this is beneficial to them. Uh, keep guys off their feet. Wrap this thing up in four or five games. It's a great point Michael had about Joe Missoula. I think that Eric Spolster would have really tested him and put him through the paces, but now he can kind of maybe ease his way into the playoffs a little bit. Quinn Snyder's a good coach, but that Atlanta team has lacked cohesion and really a defensive identity or will all year long. And so I think this is – it kind of lets the Celtics and Missoula ease into the playoffs a little bit. Okay. It's a soft opening. Yeah, it's a soft opening. But if you go back to that trade, I don't know how you guys felt about it. When they traded for DeJounte Murray, for one, mm -hmm. you're saying, okay, what are the Spurs doing? And then you look at it for the Hawks, you say, well, okay, they got Murray and they got Trey Young in the backcourt. They got a young core. Maybe they might be able to be a, a you know, top four, top five. They'd be able to do what Cleveland uh, did this year, top four seed. And it didn't work for them. They barely, you know, as you can see, barely made the playoffs. But is there something there, Gasper? Is there something there with the Hawks? If they play to their potential, they might be able to give you something. Yeah, there is. I mean, they haven't been able to do it all year long. Even this game, I mean, look, they were good against Miami, but they could have blown those guys out. They kind of let them back in the game, and it was sort of not a – it wasn't really close, but, I mean, Miami was within hailing distance in the fourth quarter, and that's sort of been the issue with the Hawks. There's a little immaturity there, I think. They do have a ton of wing guys. DeAndre Hunter is a pretty good wing player and defender. Sadiq Bay. They have A.J. Griffin, who's Adrian Griffin's kid. Uh, they have Jalen Johnson as well. So they have all these wings, which you think would sort of match up with the Celtics. But it just hasn't clicked. And also, Trey Young makes Isaiah Thomas look like the glove, like Gary Payton. He's a <laughs> terrible defender. And it's not just his size. It's a lack of interest. He doesn't want to. Yeah, he, yeah, wanna, he, he does not want to. He doesn't care enough. Okay, on the Celtics overall, Chris, maybe not this round, but going forward, if there's one thing that derails them, what is it? 
Three-point shooting. You know, if they fall in love with the three too much. Like, like, see, you get a series like this against the Hawks where they've shot the three well, and all these threes are going in. And then maybe you get to the next series against Philly, a team you've played really well against. You say, okay, it's bombs away. And suddenly the threes aren't falling. Are you going to be able to, in the playoffs, when it's physical, are you going to want to take it into the paint, absorb the blows, and go to the free throw line and earn it the hard way? Or are you just going to want to sort of make it look pretty and move the, you know, pinball the ball around the perimeter and jack up a bunch of threes on a night when you don't have that three-point shooting? I'm having a hard time seeing it in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, in the East, I don't know. I mean, there, there's one team, you know it, and Felger, you know a team. There's one team in basketball that scares me. If you're the, from the Celtics' perspective, there's one team you just don't want to see. It's Golden State. And they're terrible on the road and all this stuff, and they haven't been able to get it together. But in the Eastern Conference, the Celtics can win ugly games. They can, they can win those three-point bomb kind of games. They should be in good shape no matter who they face in the Eastern Conference. All right, give me a word on the Miami Heat. Is this the last, of the, is this the last gasp of this, of this Miami Heat team? I don't think it's the last gasp, but I think there'll be some retooling. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the Kyrie sweepstakes. Uh, Jimmy Butler oh, can God. still play. Them out of bio can still play. They have Tyler Hero, but they didn't have enough of those guys this year. You know, the Heat always, you're like, who's this guy? Where did yeah, they yeah. find this guy? They didn't get enough of that this year from that type of player, and, and that's really sort of what they needed. So I, they need to retool a little bit, I think. Bye bye. You think they're done? Bye bye. Okay. It's over. It's over. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you think isn't like, Jimmy Butler, his health, isn't it? And, it's and he, all, right. Like, cashed almost. I mean, you think about like the, the, the amount of games. We always talk about playoff Jimmy Butler. But we talk about playoff Jimmy Butler because we, we come, there are long stretches in the regular season. We don't see him. That's true. Like, Kyle Lowry is still on this team. <laughs> they don't want him to be there anymore. He had a great game tonight, but he's done. Tyler Hero didn't become the player we thought he would be in the bubble against the Celtics. Uh, Bam Adebayo is a good player. No, it's over. It's over for the Heat. Okay, one more thing. Jalen Brown in his hand, they say no restrictions. He should be fine, but five stitches is five stitches. Chris, any concern there? Yeah, definitely, especially if it's the shooting hand. It's your dominant hand as a ball handler, and he's had issues in the past in turning the ball over in the playoffs. And, and so what happens when you get hit on that hand? And, and what if they don't call the foul? And do you have the same feel, not only for the threes, but the mid-range game, which has been such a big part of what he's been able to do? Uh, I mean, my question is, I don't know exactly where this injury is, but can he palm a basketball? Uh, it's just, can he grip a basketball? It, it is, this is just so, – can I just say? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This yeah. is so Celtics. To, you know, you, you know you, th there's no team that lies worse – <laughs> on injuries in Celtics, and it's always in a positive direction. So you always take it. You don't challenge it. Like, you know, just this last one, Rob Williams, 7 to 10 days. It was over 20. You know, like they just <laughs> constantly over, you know. Do yeah, it. when's Jermaine well, O'Neal coming back? When's Shaq exactly. coming back? So it's, right. so they, they KG. Just, yeah, KG. Remember the KG? Oh, it's just a little thing. This Celtics is. Nations just doesn't do bad news, and the team plays into this. So how do they know he's not going to have any restrictions? How, how do you know that? I well, mean, you can say the stitches will be out. You can say... It should be healed by then. We know how long it takes a wound to heal. But to say you won't have any restrictions, there's no way to possibly know that. I just want to say this. I, I, I know that Jalen Brown is a very curious, intellectually curious guy. A man of many talents, like the, green, like the, the, the greenery and just, <laughs> just working with the flowers and plants. I'm just the so green in, thumb. I'm just so impressed. I'm so <laughs> impressed. Like, all these things that he can do. But no, no nothing to see here, Felger. Nothing to see. <laughs> I mean, Everything's going to be fine. Everything, you get five stitches in your shooting hand, it's not a hey, problem. At least no restrictions. As, no. At least, least it isn't as bad as a Rondo falling in the shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs>